I need a new travel mask and a travel router. Tomorrow, I'm taking my wife and six kids to Japan. Like we're leaving in the morning. And I'm realizing right now in this moment that the travel mask and router I made for my last trip isn't going to cut it. It's gotta be faster and smaller. I've got more kids and I gotta take it on a plane and Japan. And I wanted to do a lot of stuff like stream Plex to everybody, operate as a really awesome mask so I can back up my vlog footage as I'm traveling to my studio so my editors can edit it. And I wanna add some fun little Docker containers and VMs along the way because I'm extra. So here we go. I'm gonna speed run creating a travel NAS and travel router now before I leave in the morning. I don't know if this is gonna work, but test it with me. Get your coffee ready. Let's go. Now, if you were here for my last projects, I built a Raspberry Pi router as my travel router. It was running OpenWRT. It was amazing. Get me connected and safe on the road. It was a road trip. I also made a travel NAS out of a Raspberry Pi. This was running Open Media Vault, and it was actually pretty great. It did the one thing I needed it to do, and that was back up my files to my servers here at the studio. But now I've got a lot more things I wanna do, and I don't think the Raspberry Pi can handle it. Thought maybe the five can, but honestly, I'm kind of full of Raspberry Pi, I've had too much. I wanna try something new, and something I think is more powerful and maybe, maybe more fun. So I looked in my closet to see what I might have laying around. Companies do send me stuff, and I saw something that I kind of heard a lot about already. You may have seen this before, check it out. Where'd it go? This guy. I'm sure you've seen this, right? It's the Zima board, or the Zima board. I'm not really sure how you say it. This thing is kind of a beast. Here it is compared to the Raspberry Pi 5. Not much bigger and it's already in a case, but here's what got me excited about it. This thing is not ARM-based, it's x86, which means we can do so much more than we can do with the Pi. We're not limited to like Open Media Vault and Open WRT. Like, check this out. Here are the specs of this thing they sent me. And by the way, I swear the company, they did send me this. It was free, no strings attached. I forgot about it until now. They sent me the 832 model, which means it has an Intel Celeron quad core processor. It's got eight gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of onboard storage. This is dumb. And by dumb, I mean amazing. It has two SATA connections. Are you kidding me? I want to build a NAS and it's got SATA connections. I'm already drooling, but check this out. Two ethernet ports, USB, yeah, we got that, but man. <laughs> A PCIe port? Look at this! No, it's kind of weird. It's like sticking out on the side, like a like a wound, I don't know. But I can do stuff like this. Maybe I want more USB ports, bam. How about a 10 gig NIC? Sure, why not? How about a whole bunch of ports? Or even, and this is what I got really excited about, Wi-Fi 6? Look at this thing! That got my wheels turning. Wi-Fi 6 router. Can we make this happen? And then I'm factoring in this, hold on. Nested virtualization. Can I install Proxmox on this? Yes, you can. And after I heard that, I mean, I don't care about anything else. I had to try Proxmox, so I did. Hey, Chuck from the future here. I'm back from Japan. And let me tell you, throughout this process, I would have been nowhere, stumbling in the dark, flying blind, without skills I learned from training at places like IT Pro by ACI Learn. They are the sponsor of this video and one of the reasons I can do any of the stuff I'm doing. Like throughout this video, networking, Linux, virtual machines, storage, all essential skills you need to do stuff like this, you can learn from IT Pro TV. And it's not just skills for lab stuff, it's for skills for life, for jobs. You can turn these really fun things you're learning into a career, a life-changing career like I did. So if you're just getting started, man, check out the A+. Get a good foundation in IT, and then move on from there, advance your career. Learn networking with the CCNA. Learn some Linux or cloud or ethical hacking. IT Pro TV will keep you awake with their amazing training. Even when you're super tired and you can't focus and you may have a flight the next morning that you're super late for because you're trying to get a NAS ready, they've got you if you're ever in that situation like me. And if you're getting ready for that exam, to get that certification, to get that job, they do have practice exams and labs to cement those ideas into your brain. So if you wanna learn IT like me, check out IT Pro by ACI Learning, I got a link below. And if you use my link, you'll get 30% off forever. It's a no-brainer, just check it out. And now, let's do this. Now just so you know, Casa OS is what this thing ships with. It's based on Debian. It's essentially just like a pretty wrapper on top of Debian 11. And it helps you install a bunch of apps which seem to be mostly Docker based. Now I could just make that work, but come on, Proxmox on something this tiny, let me get this thing off. I feel like it's gonna put me in the app. On something this tiny that I can take with me anywhere? Pfft, come on. So I installed Proxmox on my Zima board. I installed it to an external SSD. And honestly, installing it is like installing it anywhere. You put the image on a USB drive. I booted to the USB on my Zima board and just, did the thing. Now, I will say this. One thing I wanted to have enabled was PCI pass-through, which Proxmox 8 does enable because I want to be able to pass through my PCI devices. But you have to enable this, the IO, MMU, and VTD and all that stuff in the BIOS before you install Proxmox. So I installed it initially, never worked. I re-enabled it in BIOS. Then I reinstalled it after I enabled the settings in BIOS. Bam, PCI worked. So Proxmox is installed. <laughs> Let me get logged in. It's just crazy to me. You can install it on such a small device. Bam, I'm in. So now I have my two goals, right? I wanted to have a router 
and I wanted to have a NAS. Now you might be thinking, Chuck, why do you need a travel NAS and travel router? Well, if you missed my previous video, the travel router is meant to make things easier for me and my family. Wherever we go, whether it's hotel Wi-Fi, Airbnb Wi-Fi, or plane Wi-Fi, all I have to do is connect one device, my travel router. It grabs the Wi-Fi or Ethernet connection from wherever I am. It then takes that connection, broadcasts its own Wi-Fi to my family, offering them all that sweet, sweet internet. Sweet, sweet internet. I always hated it. Saves me time in two ways. When we get to an Airbnb or wherever, I only have to connect one device to the Wi-Fi. Time saving there. And then all my family's devices are already configured to connect to my existing Wi-Fi, instantly giving them internet. Also, I can have that same device configured to automatically, automatically connect to VPN, protecting and encrypting all of our traffic. And it has the added benefit of me being in Japan, maybe wanting to watch some US shows or engage in some US based content. I can be there while not being there. Very cool. The travel NAS, I need that sucker to run Plex. I gotta have those TV shows on the plane for all my kids. I don't know if the plane's gonna have Bluey and their little cinema system. I gotta have that myself. 14 hour flight with kids, ages one to 12. I, uh, this is what I need. Also, I'm gonna be recording this entire adventure because I wanna capture this. Taking my whole family to Japan, that's crazy. So I wanna capture that craziness, upload that footage to my NAS that's with me, and overnight, that sucker can just upload my footage to the cloud and get it back here to my studio where my editors can edit that. That's the idea. I decided to tackle the router part first because I thought it might be the hardest. I could run PFSense, but you look anywhere, people say do not run PFSense with wireless capabilities. Just don't do it. It wasn't meant for that, it was an afterthought. PFSense is great. Is, is it still great though? I ignored all the drama. I don't deal with that. So PFSense was out, so I'm thinking, okay, I installed OpenWRT on my Raspberry Pi. Can I install it on the Zima board? Zima board, I'm gonna call it Zima board because I used to love Zimas. Did Zima make a comeback? Now officially you can install OpenWRT Bam, directly on this. Software to hardware, right? But I wanted to install a virtualized image, which is not easy to do. <laughs> but I did find this great article from this guy and a video of how to install it. I did get it up and running, but getting the drivers to work for anything was virtually impossible. At least for the time I had. I'm sure if I tinkered with it a bit, I could get it to work. But in the hour or so I tried, getting a USB adapter to work, getting PCIe to work, getting my Wi-Fi 6 antennas to work, it just didn't pan out. So I abandoned OpenWRT, and then I found this other thing called Rasp. AP. This is a project that does a lot of what OpenWRT does, but you can install it on any OS, whether it's a Raspberry Pi or just a Debian machine running on Proxmox on your Zima board. So I tried that. This actually started to work. I struggled with PCIe pass-through, but I did get a USB antenna to work. And this is kind of amazing. I'm running a wireless router inside a virtual machine on a Zima board on Proxmox. Like that's, that's just cool, right? And I was about ready to say yes, let's do it. But upon testing, I kept losing connection. And when I would lose connection on my, my phone, it wouldn't reconnect again. Now again, I'm sure if I troubleshooted this enough, I would figure it out. I don't have time. I gotta have something that works now. Now at this point, I felt kinda done. My dreams of having a travel router and NAS on one device running virtualized on Proxmox were dead. And I felt dead. So with no more time, I looked elsewhere for the router portion. How do I turn this thing into a router while also having it function as a NAS and whatever else I needed to? Given time, I could have made RASP AP work because I think it was just using DNS mask and host APD. Just had a pretty wrapper to it. But then I found this guy, I forgot about him. This little guy, you've probably seen these before, maybe. It's a little device from GL iNet. It's a gigabit travel router. It's meant for travel. I mean, first of all, just look how cute this thing is. This is purpose built for exactly what I'm trying to do. A lightweight travel router that can give my family access to Wi-Fi without reconnecting all their devices and making it secure while also tethering it to my resources to give them access as well. It's running OpenWRT and it has a pretty wrapper on top of it. Now, if you watch my travel router for the Raspberry Pi, OpenWRT is not for the faint of heart getting it set up. This thing, it's stupid easy. You turn it on, you select what Wi-Fi network you wanna connect to and you choose what Wi-Fi network you wanna broadcast. Click, 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 it's done. That's what I need on a trip where I'm taking my family to Japan. Something easy and stupid so when I'm like half awake, coffee deprived maybe, do they have a lot of coffee in Japan, please tell me they do, then I can just easily figure this out while my kids are screaming. Bluey, Bluey, Bluey. Do your kids watch Bluey? So I thought, okay, that's not too big, <laughs> right? I mean, I can, I can somehow figure out how to 3D print these together into one nice package. So bam, my router solution is solved. So I'm back to travel NAS. What do I do with this? I could go back to Proxmox and figure that out. But then I saw a fellow YouTuber, Nova Spirit Tech, talk about installing true NAS on his Zima board. TrueNAS, that sounds interesting because first of all, it's a NAS software or a NAS OS. Now I've never played with TrueNAS, so automatically I'm like, okay, I'm already doing something new here. Let's install a new OS I never encountered before and see what it's like. TrueNAS is awesome. Getting it installed is straightforward like any other OS on any device you've ever installed. Flash the OS to your USB drive, boot to the USB drive and install it. Now for my NAS, I do have two two terabyte SSDs that I'm plugging in via SATA. There's a nice little Y connector 
that just plugs in both then, giving it power from one port. Pretty sick. Now again, I'm new to TrueNAS, but it wasn't too bad figuring out how to set up a quick storage cluster and get some things rolling. Well, actually, it kind of did take a minute because TrueNAS is a whole thing. And this was my first time using it, and I didn't have a lot of time to mess with it, tinker with it, learn it. But hey, I did get the storage set up. This was pretty easy, relatively easy, with a bunch of Google searches. I fumbled my way through it. But you know what tripped me up? Trying to set up Plex. Yes, you can install a ton of different apps on TrueNAS, Plex being one of them. And it's pretty cool, it actually installs with Kubernetes, which I love, but man, did the permissions just kill me. I didn't know TrueNAS permissions. I kept changing things, trying to get it to work, and I'm just like, you know what? I'm done. Let's blow that sucker wide open. Allow everything, everyone. Come on, people, come and hack me. That was my attitude at that point. I didn't care. And that's what I did. And sure enough, when you open everything and allow everyone, usually what you want to get in, gets in. So Plex now had access to the libraries where I uploaded the movies and TV shows. So we're good. Which, by the way, when you're in a rush and you're just trying to get things to work, that's how most hacks happen <laughs> in those moments. Always plan and slow down, except when you're about to get on the plane to Japan. Then, then just go crazy. So anyways, yeah, I uploaded a movie, tested that. So cool. I uploaded some Bluey, because I had to make sure my kids could test that and work with that. So I uploaded Bluey, and I actually decided to do a test with them. So I loaded up my NAS, went to the house, and set about doing my experiment. All right, guys, I need you to test and see if Bluey works, okay? It's not working. What? Okay, it's 11.54, almost midnight. I'm leaving for Japan very soon. TrueNAS failed me. I thought it was great. I was so confident and happy about it, I bundled it up and took it to my house to test it with my daughters. I booted it up and <sighs> Plex never comes up. It just doesn't come up. I log into it and look, it's the dumbest thing. So Kubernetes, when it's deploying Plex, it's pulling the newest image from GitHub every time. And when it can't reach GitHub to pull that image or just at least make sure it's the latest, it won't boot. It just says, oh, I can't reach GitHub, I'm sorry. Now, could I figure out how to make that work? Maybe, but not in this state, not this close to the, the finish line here, no. So back to the drawing board. <laughs> And I ended up going back to Casa OS. The OS I was sleeping on actually is pretty cool. It took me a bit to get things rolling, but I got it. I'll detail all that stuff here later because I can't I can't tell you about this right now. I've got to get it set up. I got to go to Japan. I'll tell you when I get to Japan. How about that? Okay, I'm back from Japan. Let me tell you about Casa OS. Casa OS, the OS that ships with Zima board, and the one I started with, is what I ended up with. Now honestly, I'm kind of bummed about this because I wanted to do something cool and crazy. Nothing default, but I ran out of time. And I was about to drop the entire project altogether. Who needs a NAS? I'll just wing it. But I thought, you know what? Let me try one more Hail Mary. Let's try Casa OS, the thing it came with. Let's see what it can do. I was kind of surprised. So I re-imaged it back on there, didn't take too much, and here it is. It's got a beautiful web interface I can just access over the network, which is super handy. So when I got to an Airbnb or even the plane, I just plugged it in, waited for it to boot up, and I would log into it. Again, this is just a pretty wrapper on top of Debian 11. Now, right off the bat, you can see I was doing some fun stuff. But before we jump there, let's talk about storage. The main thing I needed it for, I needed that NAS. Well, here it is right here. Let's jump in there. This was plug and play. I had my two SSD drives plugged in via SATA, and they just were here, they were recognized. So I labeled them. The only downside is I couldn't combine them into one. They did have a beta thing that I could do to merge the storage. I wasn't about to play with beta on a trip where I, <laughs> I wasn't gonna do that, no. So I just made one hard drive my Plex and one hard drive my NAS. I say hard drive, my SSD. And then really most of what I did was just access the file app right here in the browser. Jumping into my NAS, I would just have a folder for each day of footage I recorded. And we recorded a lot. And getting the footage on there was super simple. All I would do is have this external hard drive, load up my footage on there, and then connect this to the Zima board. So watch, I'll plug it in right now. You should show up here in a second. Yep, there it is. So cool, that solves one problem. I'm getting all my footage to this NAS. But now, how does that NAS get my footage to my studio here? Normally, when I use something like Synology and then TrueNAS, I would have synced all my footage to Google Drive and Google Drive would then sync down to my studio. I didn't see a quick way to do that, but I found something even better. It's kind of amazing, actually. Check this out. Now, just so you know, Casa OS has an app store. Clicking on that will take us to it, I think. 
and they have a bunch of stuff. And this is where I simply downloaded and installed SyncThing, which will run as a Docker container. And this might be my go-to for all syncing. Let me launch it real quick. It'll open up its own web interface. And how this thing works is simple. First, I'll define the folder that I want to sync, which is this guy right here. Let's just go Japan. Keeping in mind, this is sync thing running on my travel NAS. Then I log into my NAS here at my studio. And on this NAS, I ran sync thing as a Docker container. And you can actually see that here as a remote device. And how you do this is so simple. All I had to do is click on add a remote device here. And I would just put in the device ID and then name it something I wanted to and then click on save. And the device ID would be found under actions and show ID. And just by adding that remote device with that device ID, they magically over the internet found each other. No VPN and they started syncing. Of course, I defined some folders and some syncing rules. Like for my use case, I only wanted to send data. I didn't want it to sync back and forth, but this just stinking worked. And no matter where I went in Japan, they connected up, they found each other and they started syncing. And it was pretty fast, assuming my internet connection was fast. Sometimes it was not, but leaving this thing up and letting it trickle upload overnight over time was pretty great. So if you need a way to sync two remote places, sync thing is pretty amazing. And finally for Plex, this was pretty simple. <laughs> you saw that I had my files here and I had Plex. My Plex SSD simply had two folders, movies, TV shows, all the essentials. And then going through the app store, I just installed Plex. And this was simple. And accessing my Japlex Plex system, I could watch any show. Bluey kind of saved our lives a little bit <laughs> while in Japan, but this worked like a charm. And as we traveled throughout Japan and we had all of our kids with their iPads, they could simply connect back up to our NAS, watch all their stuff. And yes, this did work on the plane. I just put this device under my seat, <laughs> plugged it in, felt kind of weird. Cause I'm like, you gotta wonder what people are thinking about me. Like what's this guy doing? What's this device he's putting under the seat and what's he plugging in? I had those thoughts. I ignored them <laughs> because it was a 14 hour flight, but it worked. And we did this everywhere on trains and hotels, Airbnbs. And real quick, let me give you a clear example of our diagram our network diagram as we traveled. So we have our Zima board here. It's gonna make it a square. He had two SSDs connected to his SATA ports with the SATA Y connector, which is pretty cool. And he was hardwired in and I had an ethernet cable plugged in from him to my little travel router, my GLI.net travel router. I'll give him his antennas here. Now this router was doing a few very important things. First, he's being a router, he's being himself. He was in charge of DHCP. I had a DHCP reservation for Mr. Zima board down here, 10.19.7.19, that's what I had. And he was also broadcasting a wireless network called Let's Just Go Fam that we would connect to all our devices. Now a fun little thing here for DNS, I was actually using Pi-hole running as a Docker container on the Zima board, which you can see right here, let me show you. Pi-hole was definitely one of the apps that were running. Let me get logged in. And here it is, my activity over, let's see, long-term data, graphics, all time. And there's all my time using it. It's kind of fun to watch. A lot of requests. I also write Uptime Kuma, a little thing called Smoke Ping, which would tell me how healthy the internet connection was wherever I was. I was geeking out, it was pretty fun. But anyways, back to our diagram. The key thing was the internet. And wherever we go, what I look for first is a hardwire. Where is the router in this Airbnb that I could hardwire my router into? Thankfully, a lot of Airbnbs just had it sitting out. I would hardwire myself in, bam, I've got extremely fast internet. Other times I would have to use the built-in client mode for the router, the GLI.net, to connect to whatever wireless they offered. That's my wireless, I don't know why it looks like that. But seriously, this worked like a charm as I traveled throughout Japan, we went everywhere and it served us well. I'm proud of this little device. That's all I got. I'll catch you guys next time.